Hey, I'm in I'm in a meeting. So out of ten. Um health is good. Um 49 years old and keep plugging along, man. I don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. I just worry about yeah. <laughs> man, you've been you've been grinding for a minute, Jay. Hats off, man. Yeah. You, you, you've been doing it, bro. And just, just coming from our Nebraska days, man, seeing where you at now, man. I always appreciate when y'all come to town and stuff, man, and checking you out and catch, you know, your players and your program and stuff. So that's that's what's up, man. But I'm really trying to like, you know, I really wanted to talk to you about how how is this impacting you know, overall college basketball. I mean, we get the, you know, the obvious that everything's canceled. But from the from the back office stuff that people yeah. normally don't get to see, you know what I mean, with a college basketball program and stuff, how is this impacting, you know, uh, you know, you and your players, your recruiting efforts, um, all that kind of stuff, man? It was tough this year because, like I said, we won eight out of ten. We finished second. Uh, we did number two seed in the WAC. So going into Las Vegas, uh, this would have been really my first opportunity to go back to the NCAA tournament since I left Nebraska. As much success as I've had in college, I've moved on. I'm kind of the, I always tell the guys, I, I jinx myself because when I've gone on to a new university, they've always won it the year I've left. So this yeah. would have been the first time since the, you know, the 90s that I felt like I could have returned to the NCAA tournament with the team we had. So a little disappointing. Uh, a lot of seniors, a lot of people worked hard uh, for it to come to abrupt end. Um, and a lot of people, the one shining moment, you know, you see at the end is is some team like Nebraska, you know, winning, you know, when we were together, um, a team that's uh, not the top seed gets that automatic berth to the NCAA. That's what makes March Madness so good. So, I mean, unfortunately, you know, there's a health crisis and, and people's lives and stuff like that. So I don't want to take away from that. Right. But, um, you know, I've been doing this for such a long time. I had those the window opportunities so small to make the NCAA tournament and then for the seniors to go out and never be able to play again. And then yeah. there's a lot of people, the NCAA just granted uh, the spring sports another year, which is good. But um, for those people just to stop playing sports, this is what you do year round. People think yeah. it's a, But I saw that they didn't do that for the winter sports, though. No, it, it's hard because, you know, we played into March. So right. technically you might have had, if we would have lost, your season's over. So right. you can't really grant um, a full season when we might have lost in the first round of tournament. So you can't grant a whole season to uh, yeah. when it's down to a game or two. So I, I, I understand that. Um, but it, it put a halt to a lot of hopes and dreams, a lot of hard work because um, the season wasn't over. And this year, college basketball was really a lot of parody. So I don't know who, you know, the Kentuckys, Dukes, and North Carolinas weren't really the favorite. It right. could have been Baylor. It could have been uh, Gonzaga or somebody like that to win it this year. So it would have been um, been a neat NCAA tournament. We might have been in it. Um, so it was a little disappointing. Uh, recruiting and, and, and school goes on. Everything's online. Everything's on the phone. Kind of old school now. Right. I'm picking up right. the phone and, and doing some Zoom like with you. Uh, a lot of phone calls, a lot of emails, watching video. Uh, don't get to travel and actually go see the players, which kind of hurts. But kind of old school, been on my phone a lot, just uh, touching base with a lot of people. Yeah, I bet, I bet. And, you know, just to reflect on what you just said about the, the tournament and for seniors, man, that was probably the most painful thing for me to hear and, and feel for those guys because, you know, I, I knew how important it was, you know, for us, um, you know, just playing in college basketball, but especially if you're a college basketball player and you're a senior, um, you know, getting to, you know, play in that final, having that final, you know, shot at the tournament, um, that's, that's monumental. It's, 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 uh, you know, you have a life stories built into that, you know what I mean? So, uh, you know, that, that was the one thing that's probably the most painful for me. Um, you know, how are you, what are you guys like planning to do for your seniors or, or you know, anything like you know, that? And for us, we had, uh, Jordan Jackson, Cheryl Swoops, uh, sons on our team. He's a senior okay. He's playing really well. He was going to be in the slam dunk contest uh, at the final four leslie varner a senior uh, ended up becoming first team all whack and not saying nba but a chance to g league or overseas so yeah. i've seen peaking uh late and you know it's a, it's not only a chance for them to be seen 
would be seen nationally, have agents look at them. Uh, so it kind of hurt them a little bit. I, I think they'll be okay. They've all signed with agents. Obviously, you have to wait till things clear up, whether they go to G League sure. or Europe or whatever. But, but it's an opportunity for to be seen and play in a three-on-three tournament, which was canceled. Uh, Leslie Varner was going to be in that. So, you know, our seniors, it, it did hurt them. Uh, we had another 6'11 kid who plays sparingly, but had a chance to play, maybe, you know, get to the NCAA tournament or, or play a little bit. So yeah. um, those things, playing time for your after basketball life, they're all going to graduate, which is great. But you want to keep playing and keep bettering yourself to make some money, whether it be the G League or Europe or who knows, maybe the NBA is one day. Yeah. But you know, man, you know, one of the things that I'm going to, I'm going to make sure that, you know, your your resume and your background is told, uh, you know, when I put this out, man, because, you know, you have seen it. You, you, you've you been a, a, a D-League coach, you know, uh, as well as a, you know, Division One basketball coach for over, you know, close to what, 27 years now? Coming uh, up to 30? Yeah, almost 27 years. 27 years, man. That's I mean, talk about somebody who know the grind, who understand the ins and outs of this thing, man. Um, you know, like I said, my hat's off. Salute to you, bro, because you, you've been doing this for a long time, man. And people just don't stay in this business if, you know, if, if you don't, you don't know what you're doing from a coaching perspective, but then if you're not a likable guy, or, you know, a coach, you know, that kind of thing, that personality to fit into this world, man. Um, it's a special group of people, man. Um, and, and, and I just like, you know, for me, being a basketball player, man, and, um, you know, getting into the coaching, I have more of a, you know, progression and an interest in getting into the business world and stuff. But my business yeah, was to be a coach. You, knew you, would have been a, you would have been a great coach. We all knew that from day one. I, I, I think I would have been okay. But, you know, my passion, you know, was, was in the business side of it. You know, for me, that's always been my thing. Um, but I just love what I'm doing, man, in a, in a way to where we can give back. And where I have relationships with people like coaches like yourself um, to be able to talk about these kinds of things, man, and, and share it with the world. You know what I mean? Um, so that's that's what I love about this, man. But, um, you know, in reference to kind of like next year, how do you how do you uh, see, you know, like NCAA ramping things back up or, you know, you think it's just going to, you know, once they turn the switch back on, everything's kind of going to go back to normal. Um, you know, all that if, kind of stuff. if we started back today, things go back to normal very quickly. Um, yeah. We're getting our guys, our seniors on, our juniors, sophomores. We are at a plan. We're schools online now, so we're doing things a little different. Um, but the workouts, you know, our summer plans, everything's on hold. But it's as soon as they say you're back to normal, things slow down, and you're back to your summer workouts. You're back to your fall schedule. Now, the longer and scarier this virus and this thing goes on obviously you got to look at life and you have to look at things differently and of course we'll move accordingly but um you, you know I, I i try to keep people calm i try to say it's going to get back to normal uh, by faith grace hope and pray um we're going to be okay so yeah. I, i'm kind of one of those guys uh, i went through some medical things a couple years ago so i look at life yeah. differently so I, i've been buried in down twice so i, I i'm just waiting for God's grace to come in and let this pass and let us get back to normal. A new normal, though. A new yeah. normal. But, again, basketball is going to be airing it. The ball's going to bounce. The lights are going to come on. The fans will be full, whether you're JUCO, NAI, D1, NBA, whatever. Yeah. We're going to come back to normal. Um, but be a little smarter. Be a little, be a little healthier. And, uh, but, but, but you miss sports. You miss life. Yeah. Uh, so many Netflix. It's, it's a, man, it is, a, it is a cornerstone. A, a cornerstone in our in our country, yeah. you know, whether it's basketball, baseball, football, you know, race car driving, whatever. We, you know, our foundation is sports, and and sometimes, man, you know, I just really wish that um, sports was used more than politics, you know, because it brings the people together and unites people so much better than you know a lot of the other stuff and I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna go into all of that but you know what i'm saying sports is a unifying thing man and um yeah so we, travel, we miss it from that uh, we definitely miss it from that perspective when i when we travel my coaches uh, think i'm crazy kenny crandall's on our staff he's from nebraska yeah 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 i, I know, you know, I know nebraska kenny. hat or shirt i just go up and hug him if i see anybody with a Dallas cowboy hat uh, jacket, I give him a high five, and you, know, you? You, know that. you don't even know those people. I, say, I don't care. 
the right. for the same team. Exactly. The Cowboys. So sports brings you white, black, Hispanic. I don't care who you are. If exactly. you're wearing a, Boston or a Dallas Cowboy hat, I give you a hug or a high five, and it just bonds us for whatever weird, weird <laughs> So we have absolutely here. absolutely man absolutely so jay is is your players are they still on campus or have you guys sent those guys home or how, how well, is that working out pretty home for safety reasons uh yeah the school shut down um need to be at home with their families during this time um everybody's online finishing all their classes online oh um, great great some people stay out of the gym I and mean, if you can do stuff in your yard or you know get a little jogging or something but you know be safe it's it, it's it's better to be inside let this thing pass Yep. We can pick this thing back up in a month or two. We can get jogging again. We can we can all do stuff. So don't don't worry about basketball right now. It'll be the final four It'll be this weekend. And then we'd all be taking a month, two month break anyway. So right, we're right. okay. I miss uh I was texting with Teron Lou uh yesterday. I'm missing that part because I'm then right. jumping to the NBA and, and watching the Clippers or Cavs or whatever. So I miss that part. But but um you know, college basketball is wrapping up this weekend anyway so we'll yep. be okay. and spring sports and baseball i feel sorry for them but um, as far as us though we're, we've been done this weekend anyways yeah and you know one of the other big things too with with the final four tournament is every year you know the coaches that's a big huge networking event for coaches as well you know so how, how are you kind of like strategizing and, and you know a guy like yourself you got 27 years of experience in you know, you can send out emails, phone calls to make those connections stuff. But what do you recommend to those younger um, guys that's trying to get into the coaching business and, and how they should network themselves? And I was actually, uh, I was supposed to go to Final Four in Atlanta this weekend. Uh, obviously, you know, Eric Strickland and I, he's doing some synergy, some uh, web-based uh, recruiting, and I was going to okay. introduce them to this stuff. So there's a lot of things that were shut down. Um, but again, old school way, email, pick up the phone, and call people because the one thing I've done more in the last two weeks is actually call people instead of text or you know yeah. just a generic uh, Twitter whatever. So old school, pick up the phone, call these people. Everybody's got time to talk right now. Um, email people. I've been reading my emails instead of just kind of glancing at them. I actually have time to go through that. So it's almost yeah. set us back in time a little bit. But more importantly, build those old school relations where you talk face to face, Zoom like you and I are. Or, uh, you know, just pick up the phone and get to know people. I was talking to a uh, recruits guy, a New York guy today, but I was more worried about his health and his family. But he was like, man, I haven't talked to anybody like this in a long time. But it's, right. it's good. It's good. Pick yeah. up the phone. And call people. Call your family and friends. But then uh, if you want to get into the business, uh, you know, there's a lot of online stuff right now. If you look at Twitter or Facebook, a lot of coaches are having online Zooms like this. We're actually going to do one next week where I can just plug in and, and listen to uh, some of the college coaches, Coach Calipari, Kentucky, just did one. And a lot of the coaches are just doing Zoom and standing in the gym by himself and just talking basketball. Coach Musselman at Arkansas is. And so I just log in and, and just learn basketball. Um, yeah. Like I said, I wasn't a Jamar Johnson. I used that years ago in an article they wrote. Um, <laughs> but I've always had to study and learn. I, I wasn't able to play like you guys, but I always wanted to recruit players like you. And I always wanted to learn how to move the pieces of the puzzle um, so we, we what best fits your game. So always, yeah. always learning. So I know you're saying you're, you're um, you know, definitely going through a lot of emails and watching a lot of online film and highlights of players and stuff. But what are the kind of uh, film that you like watching on on guys you're scouting and recruiting? The the biggest thing is a, a program called Huddle. Um, yep, I know how to I have logged into there where I can actually look up a kid, generate his name. Um, the kids or the high schools loads up. Uh, YouTube can trick you. And I hate to say it like that. Everybody can send me a two minute YouTube video of all their dunks and they never miss. They never right. turn the ball over. So I see that a lot, but I like going to huddle where I can actually watch a game. Yeah. And see the mistakes because I want to know a complete player. I know Jamar Johnson, great player, Indiana, this and this, but I want to see some of his rougher games. Right. See what, what I can say, Hey man, I watched you versus, uh, this school over here at Muncie, and I know that, man, if you would have done this, this, and this, instead of seeing how great you were against whoever. Yeah. So I the game, the games you go three for 15 and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because that's the adversity. That's what I want to see. I don't want to see greatness. I want to see, you know, we, we play Texas A&M and, and Baylor early next year. I'm not saying uh, some of the other schools in our conference, they're not as good as them, but I want to see what you're going to do early we played Oklahoma this year, Texas Tech. I need to see what your what adversity, how you're going to handle that. 
we play yeah. the big schools. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. So, yeah. So, Jay, man, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to end it on that note. I'm, I'm glad you and your family, man, are safe and, and healthy and doing well, man. And you, you, you know, taking this, this whole situation in stride and staying busy with work and stuff, man. That's awesome. Um, bro, if there's anything I can ever do, you know, for you, you know where I'm at, you know, you know how to hit me up and stuff, man. But um, I appreciate your time, man, and you sharing this with my player network and my coaches network and stuff. Um, this is definitely going to bless them and benefit them, bro. So thank you. Thank you, man. I love you, brother. Thank you so all much. All right. Love you too, man. You take okay. care, all right? Okay. All right. All see right. you when y'all come to Phoenix too. I will. I will. I all will. right. I will. Okay. All right. Later.